Everybody needs beauty as well as bread, places to play in and pray in, where nature may heal and give strength to body and soul. John Muir Born in Arkansas in 1908, my Dust Bowl granny, she told me that we're all born with an acre of land, and it's what we do with that acre of land during our lifetime that ultimately will define us. Walter Bartlett knew this as well, as did three more generations of the Bartlett legacy. Dreaming, planting, and tending trees on an arid Kansas prairie became a family's tradition. In the 1930s, the United States Department of Agriculture used these hallowed grounds for trials of new tree varieties. Proudly listed on the National Registry of Historic Places, the Arboretum boasts nine state champion trees and one national champion. Never in our own short history have we needed more inspiration from the greatest teacher of all, Mother Nature. The Arboretum's towering pines and oaks have lived through hard times drought, flood, freeze, and now plague. Unaware of the pandemic all around us, these mighty wonders provide hope for us now. This garden and these trees teach us many things. Three precepts for a life well lived. Hope more and fear less. Give more, expect less, produce more, and then consume less. Consume less alcohol and nicotine and natural resources and maybe television, but produce more ideas and songs, art and memories, stories that live on to become family legend, teaching us what it means to be human. Even now, as we are shuttered in place, to witness beauty in nature is both a comfort and a call, a promise that wisdom lies just beyond the window pane, but not beyond our reach. These tallest trees, our elders, would advise us to be patient, to stand tall and strong and keep perspective, to shelter the most fragile among us, to send roots deep into those things that matter most, family, community, and faith. To honor one another as never before, even as we isolate. And to understand that in this season, we are given one more chance to get this right. We must choose wisely to be better stewards of the good earth and of each other. My mama always says, girl, yesterday is history, tomorrow a mystery, today is the gift, and that's why we call it the present. Deadly pandemic rages across the United States. Hospitals and clinics are overwhelmed as new laws restrict movement and confine people to their homes. As the death toll surges, government struggles to respond. The year? 1918. 
Worldwide, between 1918 and 1919, the Spanish flu will ultimately kill 50 million people, sickening young and old, hale and fragile, rich and poor. Some researchers say the deadliest pandemic in history may have started in Kansas when young men from Haskell County, serving as World War I soldiers, transported the disease to Fort Riley and eventually on to Europe. A few years earlier, in 1910, a Kansas country doctor had a dream. Inspired by the fabled gardens in St. Louis where he'd studied medicine, Walter Bartlett dredged a creek on the outskirts of Belle Plaine, reshaped 18 acres that had once been used as the town dump, and planted trees and gardens. He put down roots, married his high school sweetheart, and fathered two children. Bartlett's Park, an unlikely paradise on the prairie, became known as Bartlett Arboretum. In June of 1918, the Spanish flu found its way back to Kansas. Doc Bartlett's only daughter, seven-year-old Maxine, perished from the influenza that took the lives of over half a million Americans. From a hospital in France, where he lay suffering from war wounds, Maxine's brother Glenn wrote, My dear father, I have just received your letter announcing the saddest event that could ever befall me, the death of my beautiful little sister Maxine. If anything should happen to me over here, it is my wish that some fitting remembrance be left her, beautiful as she was. Glenn recovered, returning home to fulfill his wish, and every spring from that time until this, 40,000 tulips bloom in his sister's memory. Tulip time! It is a paradox indeed that a century-old widespread disease is the reason for this tradition. If a flower blooms in a darkened world and no one sees it, does it still shine a light? We say yes. Although our green garden gate remains closed this spring, it's a sacrifice we gladly make. The love and honor behind Glenn's legacy, a breathtaking memorial to his sister, has moved visitors for a hundred years. Today, in this 21st century pandemic called COVID-19, we honor our medics on the front lines, doctors, nurses, hospital workers of all kinds, and the promise Brother Glenn made long ago now becomes our own tribute, our offering of beauty to a broken world.